Hey everybody, Benny the Beast here again with a custom Beat Saber mapping tutorial. Today's focus is going to be Mediocre Mapper and how to use it, and adjusting a song with variable BPM so that you can effectively map it without having to map by ear in uh, Beat Saber Editor. Mediocre Mapper is made by Squeaksies. It's a fork of Edit Saber Enhanced by Permission Brick, which added a few extra features to the original Edit Saber by Ikewa which I used in my original tutorials. Mediocre Mapper has a lot of cool new features like RGB lighting, uh, chroma toggle editing for the chroma toggle mod made by Sky Kiwi, and, and there's a, a wealth of new and cool stuff that Sky Kiwi's created in there as well. And what else is in there? Variable BPM, you're able to adjust that in Mediocre Mapper. Uh, he's also creating new stuff like multiplayer that you can see down below, uh, BPM and offset tapper, which I like to use. I'm a huge fan of metronomes because that is how music is made. So I want to just go ahead and jump right into it. We're going to do Disco Inferno um, by the Tramps. There's some cool stuff in here. You can download and temporarily open songs from Beat Saver. This is great if you just want to take a peek at other people's work. And you can unmeme it, but I don't suggest that because it totally breaks the whole system. So what we're going to do is use Disco Inferno. Make sure all of this info is input correctly. And I'm going to open up the song, pop it into Audacity so that I can get it started. I already know the BPM. Uh, it is 129. I'm going to generate a new audio track. Click inside it so you don't mess it up whenever you create a rhythm track. But this is essentially a metronome that allows you to listen to it uh, along to the song. The first time I did this, I spent about 30 minutes extra. So I'm recording this a second time just so that it's clean and concise and you know exactly what needs to happen. So what I like to do uh, initially is bump the song back. I like to always start it at least uh, a full measure out. And then I want to play the song and see where it's at along the rhythm track and try to line it up. What I was having trouble with the first time is I was looking at it visually and lining it up. So I would line it up here. But this is actually, uh, while listening to it, completely off. It was I was essentially lining it up to the off beat. And so what I want to do is I actually counted it out the second time, and it actually lines up like this. You see that the main beat is here. It's actually not on that main beat because they're hitting a downbeat. And one of the best ways to do this is to count and find where um, the metronome is hitting. If you know how to play music, you should be able to count through this. And then you match that to the metronome, and this is what you get. So I want to nudge it just a little bit more. I like my, uh, I like it to be just behind that line, like right about there. And I make sure to generate silence here at the intro, because if you don't, it'll just. Push your song all the way back to the start. No, nah, we'll just go from there. So export your song as an OGG. Uh, find your folder. I have it here already. I just name it song because that is the easiest thing to do to make sure, uh, you know, I'm not, I don't have uh, commas or apostrophes in the song name. It makes it super simple. Song.OGG, beautiful. What I'm going to do is just make a new difficulty so you can see what's happening here whenever I edit the level. In my previous tutorial, I had used start offset. I don't like that anymore because whenever copying to a new level, sometimes it messes up and throws the notes, uh, you know, it shifts them in a different direction. And for note jump speed, uh, I tend to keep it to uh, 10 normally, 12 sometimes for my extra plus. I've done a few songs that were 14, uh, maybe 15, because that is what 
the higher tier players uh, enjoy the speed uh, of the notes coming at you that fast. But for me, I actually prefer it slower. So 12 is probably my go to for an expert plus. Um, because it's it's easier to read the notes are coming uh, at a slower speed so it's more comfortable uh, to play so what I want to do is go ahead and get started setting up this BPM to the track it's gonna drift I already know this because I tried it earlier and it wasn't until mediocre mapper now that I feel comfortable mapping it instead of mapping it by ear so I lay down a bunch of these one thing I like to do is there's a new copy function where you can hold control, left click, and then left click again after you've spanned a distance, and this selects all those notes in that distance. And so what I can do is easily just control C to copy, control V to paste. That way I can just make a whole bunch of notes and then test if this BPM's working. <laughs> I like it, it's solid enough. If you pay attention to the waveform, you wanna look to see if those hits in the music are lined up to the beats. And that's gonna be the best thing uh, to do is keep an eye on that. So, um, this song just totally drifts. Uh, if you watch where my cursor is, watch this uh, waveform to the beats and watch how it just takes off. So this is the problem, uh, you'll see it in a second. There it goes, you see it drifting? It's drifting to the left. This is the problem that variable BPM in the editor can help fix. So old songs like this, um, or if you just have a song that totally changes BPM for fun, and uh, this editor is great to help with that. So I wanna go to just before it starts to drift off. So that's about, Eh, right about here and what I want to do is uh, come over to the side press tab to bring up the other selection and I want to mess with this BPM number so whenever you look at these bars these are the beats per minute and if you want more beats per minute then these bars are gonna shrink and I'll just show you an extreme example of that so more beats per minute than 129 so we're adding 31 beats per minute it shrinks everything, right? You see how the bars come closer? And then if I were to go the other way, the bars get more far apart because there's less beats per minute. But this is a, this is a bit tricky. This is really, um, we're, we're just nudging it around to make sure it's on uh, track. And so I'm gonna be playing with just really close uh, numbers here. Like I probably won't go past plus or minus two. So I put that to 0.5 and it does fix it, but then it drifts a little bit. So where it's back, I'm gonna move to where it's back on beat just before it drifts again. Let's go back right here. Okay, this looks good. And I'm gonna turn that back to the original BPM and see if that fixes this drift. There's a lot of, uh, there might be some fudges like this one that jumps off a little bit, but it's not terrible. Most of it's in order. So just that one note, you might be able to get away with not worrying about it. Okay, so it drifts again. You see, you see how it pushes up. Let's get rid of that. You see how it pushes to the left some here. So what I wanna do is come back to where it wasn't drifting and I wanna, I wanna change that again. So, if it's pushing to the left, it's, it's getting more beats per minute. So, let's tighten up the chart and see if that helps. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep, yep. I want to actually tighten it up just a bit more because I don't like how... Um... Uh, so like I'm gonna do 130 say uh, I like it to be I like that waveform to be just behind I never want it to be ahead of I would rather it be behind um, than not okay so I nudge it a bit too far but it doesn't go off until right around here so let's switch it back right here 
back to our original BPM. And so while you're doing this, it's important to, oh, yikes. No, that's getting messy. OK, I think this is 129.5. Now watch that waveform again, and that's much better. So as you're doing this, it's always important, again, to drop some notes down and test, uh, listen to it, and make sure it's on. Yeah. yeah, it's sounding good. So let's keep on going. Let's keep chugging. Um, I do want to keep going, but I think this is actually good enough. I think you get the gist of it. You can play around with these BPMs to adjust things. It's, it's glorious if you have variable BPM songs, or if you're trying to map a song like this that has, that's old and has a lot of drift. Let's, let me show you a few more things about Mediocre Mapper while I'm on this, uh, in this tutorial. Okay. If you were to put down lighting, so grab a red and then turn it on, or let's do a fade actually. So grab, so I pressed one and I press D to get the fade. And just drop down some uh, lights. I'll show you how the RGB lighting works with the chroma toggle mod. So this is all normal, right? You have your red lights. What you can do is you can do chroma toggle and what that is is this bottom section down here it'll pull it up and you can make a color and then you can right click one of these boxes to place that color in there so if you ever want to reference this color just click it with the left to grab it and then you can place it onto the map what it does is it's not a block for uh, of light it's actually a block that states oh you press one to put it down um, that what comes after it is now going to be that color so say your bottom back side lasers are now green and your left lasers are going to be blue and it'll look something like this so they're the bottom lasers and then that left laser which is actually a bottom laser you can see that it's blue so you can do all sorts of things with this you can just go nuts if you love colors and if you're a magician with colors have fun like it's it's wild and it's fun to do the other cool thing you can do is a gradient. So this is a little tricky. It took a little trial and error, but you click gradient after you, so you select a color, right? You left click it and then you can drop it down here and then left click it and drop it down here. And then you click gradient. And what it'll do is it'll change colors along a gradient at this is quarter, every quarter note it changes colors, but let's just do every whole note it changes colors so that you can see what's happening. So I click gradient and then I click one of these lighting blocks and it turns this little black box and that's exactly what you want. And it works just like the control select and it'll plop down uh, just a bunch of color gradients. So it's changing it over time and you can watch it change from blue to red. So this is just a really cool function. So have fun with that. Something else that you can do is a strobe. So the strobe light has now been made easy to use. So say I have, um, I'm have, i working with the red light and I want to do the strobe. All you have to do is right click on any of these lighting blocks to select the strobe. 
um, of that block. So here's going to be a strobe of fades. It's going to be, let's change it, bump it up to two seconds. And let's do the interval. Let's do 1 16th note. So let's make it just go fucking haywire. So you can see what a strobe looks like. Ha! <laughs> Cool, right? And then another cool thing that you could do with the strobe is do some fun ring rotations. And it's just wild. It looks really cool in game. Totally worth playing around with. You might even want to just go crazy, do a 30 second one, a 32 um, notes uh, strobe interval. What just happened? And drop that in there. <laughs> just make it wig out. But anyways, so this is Mediocre Mapper. There's a lot of cool stuff in here that Squeaksies has added for all of us to use. Uh, give him a hug if you know him IRL. Um, yeah, but I hope you enjoy. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please post them down below or go to the Beat Saber modding Discord. I'll put a link in the description. You can ask all the questions you ever want about mapping, and they'll help you get started. All right, everybody, have a good one.